Hey YouTube, um, it wise guys. So I want to bring you an SFML uh, tutorial series uh, with a little bit different. Uh, I've noticed every single last tutorial is based in uh, code blocks. Uh, I'm gonna go straight out and say it, and whatever if I get some hate for it or whatever. Code blocks is just it is trash. It is absolutely the single worst idea uh, I've ever had to endure using uh, for the short amount of time in which I uh, discovered SFML. Uh, my home is QT Creator. Uh, I use a few others. Uh, I use Notepad++, uh, a few other text editors and whatever else. Uh, if I'm building on Linux, then I mostly just use Vim. But uh, if, I'm on, if I'm on Windows, which I am at this very current moment for this tutorial series, I use Qt Creator, and I almost always use the Qt framework for any kind of rapid deployment of applications that I want to do, uh, or any GUI applications or whatever. But regardless, uh, the Qt Creator is just a—it's just an awesome IDE. It's got the, one of the best IntelliSense I've ever used. Uh, it definitely is a strong contender against uh, any Microsoft products uh, whatsoever. So. This tutorial series is going to be going through the basics and right up to the most advanced. Uh, this is not a uh, game development series so much as it is how you can actually do stuff with the SFML framework. So uh, by the end of this, uh, what we want to be getting up and running is, and I already did this just to save some time, uh, what we want to get up running is this window. So, my bad. I really hate how it does that. That's one thing that really annoys me about Windows the most is, apart from the fact that it crashes all the time, uh, <clears throat> it just constantly has these. See, I just move the window and it just goes away. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> That's kind of really annoying me, but. All right, so we have this window and uh, let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, and I've been staring at this thing, not just because I like the look of, you know, uh, 33 lines of some includes and stuff. It's because we need to set up uh, SFML uh, in Qt Creator. So if you haven't already, you should have downloaded. Um, you should have downloaded. Uh, you should have downloaded SFML. Sorry. So I always have it just in my Qt directory. Uh, mine's right here. So once you've got that, if you want to put it in here, um, see Qt five two one SFML. Then I'll put this in the description so you can copy and paste it. Uh, the only thing that will change is uh, the linker settings. So sorry, so your linker. Uh, you need to change this to the path of the library folder, uh, and you need to also include your change your include and dependency path to wherever this is. So I'm assuming by nature, if you are using SFML or have an interest in this, then you'll be able to just do this by. Uh, reading this, uh, I shouldn't have to explain to you just the most basics of computing. Anyway, alright, so uh, I have one thing in here which I, I will explain why. Uh, config plus equals C++11. The reason I have that is I'm using C++11 feature set really heavily and uh, in my issues and application output, um, if you don't have that, you'll get a ton of uh, C++11 warnings. They're not errors. Uh, they're perfectly valid C++ now, uh, however back before the standard was released, they are completely and utterly illegal in uh, C++. Uh, you know, so without further ado, what I'll do is we'll get our, our basic window set up, so uh, I'll actually just comment this whole thing out and uh, we'll go through step by step. So. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to include sfmlgraphics.hpp and that's pretty much it. Next you need to do uh, is you need to just have a main function. So we don't actually need the arguments since we're not passing any arguments in. Uh, this is a Qt application first and foremost. So we do need to initialize a um, argc and argv. Alright, so we do need these. Um, Actually, let's not actually pass anything to that constructor since we took away the parameters. Um, Alright, so we're going to initialize our QCore application, uh, and we just simply do it like that. And the next thing we need is a render window. Uh, so, this tutorial is just to explain to you what <clears throat> each of these classes do. I do not recommend setting up your applications like this, simply because 
anything larger than a tutorial based program will get incredibly confusing if you do not use object oriented uh, the object oriented paradigm so even though that these are classes and stuff you want to further abstract your program into 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 further different classes uh, you may want to use you know um, you may want to use subclasses for absolutely everything. I recommend that. I find it's much easier to organize your code. Uh, you don't run into problems of procedural programming. Uh, you just have just much, much greater control of everything. So anyway, we're going to do is set up our window anyway. Um, so everything in SFML is under the SF namespace. If you don't know what a namespace is, I highly recommend go looking those up. Uh, they're part of the C++ feature set for a long time. Uh, so when you set a video mode, the video mode takes two constructors, sorry, two parameters in the constructor, um, and it actually takes three, but we're not going to worry about the third one. Uh, that's pixels per, uh, sorry, bits per pixel. Uh, so whether that's basically your color mode, if you know what that is. Uh, and we're going to give it one more into this constructor. There's another um, parameter which it takes, but we're not going to worry about for this tutorial. So hello, uh, QT, and YouTube. Don't want to forget about you guys. Alright, and once you've done that, uh, why in the hell? Oops, sorry. Uh, and we need an event handler, so this is the most basic program ever. Uh, so we'll just call this my event handler. And we don't need to do anything with it. It takes no constructor as far as I'm concerned. Whoops, why in the hell? I have no idea why my ID just did that. But anyway, while my window is open so there's a method in this class called is open uh, so while this is basically our event loop and I'll show you how to use it for staging and those kinds of things much later but for now you just need to understand that this is the event loop and everything that happens happens inside this event loop uh, to an extent there's a lot of exceptions to that but they're not that important at the moment so what we need to do is uh, we need to start polling the event handler. So if my window dot poll event and we just pass it the parameter. Uh, so that just passes the event handler by reference. And again, I'm sorry, there's a lot of like construction going on in another part of my house, so it's kind of really loud. And finally, what we'll do well not finally, but um, if we're gonna set it so we can close the window when we click the X button on it. Uh, so, dot type is equal to SF, and this is an enumeration, uh, SF event close, that's just an enumerator, uh, and we need to set it to my window, we need to call close, uh, later on I'll show you that that doesn't equal, uh, the end of your program, the end of the life of your program. Because ultimately QT, sorry, the QT framework uh, and the QCore application uh, object actually has the entire event loop. Like that, that is essentially like once you exit this event loop, you end up inside of uh, your QCore application, which is just why I'm returning zero. Uh, so I'm not going to return a dot exit. I'm actually going to return uh, returning zero. So we'll run this and uh, we'll get a very strange window and I'll explain why in a second. So we'll run this and sure enough, uh, we get a completely invisible window. Uh, and well, actually, it's completely bugging out, but yep, anyway. So the reason that that happens, uh, whoops, I should have checked my event handler. <clears throat> Press this and we've returned zero and that's the end of the life of our application. So the reason we have uh, nothing being in our window is pretty simple because we didn't draw anything and we definitely didn't display anything so to do that uh, we'll go to my window dot clear and we've got to set a uh, color to clear so um, SF color and I want it to clear to red so I'll set the red channel to maximum 255 zero and no alpha channel because I don't care about that at the moment and finally I'll just display what's uh, what has to be drawn so if you've done OpenGL which I don't know why you'd be messing around with this but if you have done OpenGL, uh, this is similar to the old paint event. Uh, so this is just redraws your screen. And I'll run this and see what we get. 
cool. So we get the same red window. Um, and in fact, I can show you something. Uh, if you guys want to see something, what I'll do really quickly just to show you how it's redrawing the screen. Um, int RGB. So what I'm doing here is I am R equals, I'll say R equals like 255. Uh, actually, no, I won't do that. That's kind of really bad programming. Um, R equals 255, G equals 0, and B equals 0. So red, green, and blue, red equals 255, green equals 0, and B equals 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a keyboard event handler. So I'll just show you one more type of event. So uh, if um, SF keyboard is key pressed. Now this is a direct way of getting access to the keyboard. Uh, if SF keyboard, and then we'll say up, whoops. I don't know why that, that should be an enumeration, it might be just lowercase, that's why. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, so we'll say uh, G++, plus plus. actually we'll say G++ plus equals 5, because it's a hell of a lot faster. And I'm just going to change this to G, can't bother with the rest of them. I just want to get this tutorial out and done really quickly now. So we'll run this, and here we go, so now if I hold down up, you can see, there we go. So we're changing the... Um, the color of it. Every time you go over, the reason it goes back to red is every time you go over uh, 255, uh, I'm not sure how this specific class handles it, but I'm pretty sure it will just reset G uh, since that takes a, I'm pretty sure it takes a pointer reference or I'm pretty sure it passes it in by reference. So uh, you, should, you guys should know about pointers and stuff if you're going to follow this, but let me just check actually. It should say in the... Uh, yeah, SF, SF color takes, pretty sure it is, no it's not, I don't know, uh, it might just be because when you go over it, that's how it just deals with it, just goes back to zero, but anyway, um, what we can do is we can say, uh, if you wanted to circumvent that, we'll just do a little algorithm, we say, uh, if not G greater than, uh, or equal to 255 and there we go so we'll just run this and see what we get so we can still go through uh, whoops that's completely wrong that should be like that I don't know why I did that but anyway There we go. Uh, and in fact, we probably don't want to step over. So we don't want to step over that boundary. So we'll say less than. There you go. So we get yellow. So red and green makes yellow. I hope this has helped, guys. I'm trying to get better at actually doing these tutorials in themselves. Uh, so if you have any feedback, whatever, just chuck it in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching.